And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano, get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, man. Do we have a great show for you today? Captain Al Clowers is back in the studio. We're going to be talking all kinds of fishing, and just like Al, Captain Al always has, man, it's all going down today. Bay fishing, inshore fishing, offshore fishing, islands, bluefin, and more. You stay tuned. It's going to be a real fun one. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California's sport fishing voice on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Inside information is everything when it comes to catching fish in Southern California. You need a code group to connect with what's happening on the water. Fishdope.com is your code group. Inside information available at your fingertips seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. They become your code group. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Catine, 365 days a year. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, temperature and chlorophyll charts, hot bite icons and more. Take it from me, if you don't have Fishdope.com, you're not part of the in the know crowd. Membership is affordable and good for an entire year. Plus, use the special code and save $30 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers, but Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable state rooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. In San Diego, the future belongs to everyone. So Ford engineered the truck of the future for everyone. The Ford F-150. Available with a Pro Power onboard generator. What a great addition for anglers. There's also a variety of cab configurations for whatever you need to haul. The truck of the future isn't created for just a few. It's created for us who love the ocean and the outdoor life. Ford F-150. Test drive one at your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hook up! All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And, man, having Captain Al Clowers in here, kind of cool, right? Yeah, where you been, buddy? You've been <laughs> yeah. fishing, man. It's been hard to get you into the studio here. That boat of yours has been untied from the dock this whole year, and you guys have been kicking some butt, catching some good fish. But uh, that's my favorite part about the little bit of off season is we finally get guys like you that are busy all year long to come hang out with us and talk some fishing. Absolutely. It's perfect to come in here this time of year, you know. This winter I did some traveling, spent a month in Hawaii, spent a month in Hawaii and a bunch of time in the desert. And a boy. Came back and did all the boat work. And Re- recovering from a long season of right, right, tuna yeah. and inshore and offshore. Right. And that, that's always been the fun thing about Captain Clowers is you, you guys do everything. I mean, whatever. Right. It swims, you're going to go fishing for it. Bay bass to bluefin. And, you know, some people throw that around, but I mean, you really, you guys really do. You specialize in it. You, you might be doing an inshore bay trip in the, you know, in the afternoon, a p.m. half day, and then the next morning you're going to fly a kite for a big bluefin. Absolutely, you know, <clears throat> Jeremy when he was working with me, he's like, man, you got so many rods in here. I said, we have to have them. I said, you know, you got to have them from bay fishing to big bluefin. You yeah. Know? Or take it to the car and take them home every day, but we're not doing that. So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, you know. Um, the only downfall of that, when the bluefin are biting, it's good to be on them every day. And some days I'll get two or three three-day stretch off them because I'm fishing the island. Sure. 
you know, with families and kids and stuff like that. And then you got to reload. And then you got to get back on the scene. But we're good at what we do, and no doubt. that's what we do. So tell us a little bit about the operation. I mean, that's the thing. You 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 know, multiple boats, multiple fishing, and you know, it, it's not new to you anymore, but still new to some of the guys that haven't fished with you. You added a beautiful Riviera to your your fleet of boats, and I mean, you guys really do you really do everything. And the thing that I love so much about your operation is you'll fish any of those fisheries in whichever boat you have like you'll you'll go bay fishing in the riviera no problem yeah absolutely the riviera is the the main state right now <clears throat> but yeah um luxury bay trips up to six pe- up to six people you know right now uh what we're doing on the calendar is bay trips and three-quarter day island trips okay and, and you're talking san diego bay yeah san oh, diego man. bay that's san diego bay only prolific, i grew up in the back man. bay so <laughs> that's my home yeah we're, we're fortunate to have that right here i right. mean that's right. shoot man everything from short fin corvina halibut right bay bass mm-hmm. good sand bass i mean we're fortunate to yeah. have not only that shallow water fishery but there's so much like 30 to 50 feet of water that brings in all the sand bass and bigger halibut and just right. a good you know, ecosystem. Right. In the middle of the channel, you can't go wrong. <clears throat> in the channel edges, you know. Uh, lots of spotties right now. And the sand bass, there's some sand bass in the bay, you know. Is San Diego Bay a true year-round fishery? I mean, is there... Absolutely. Yeah. You can, yeah. You know, no matter what time a guy wants to go book a trip, there's there's fishing to be had. Right. When the water gets cold, below, cold meaning, uh, you know, under 64 or something, then the corvina and the bonefish, I'm not sure where they go. But they probably just suspend, but <clears throat> they're not. They're hard to catch. Not active. In the summer, man. i uh, tell you what, last year from May... Through July, it was the best sand bass bite I've seen in a long time. Really? really? We were smoking them, yeah, and big ones. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And uh, how do, how does one, like, target that fish? Like On our, well, there's a bunch of different ways, you know. Uh, obviously, the guys are winning the, the old bay bass tournaments on the Bama rig, you know. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> with the clients I have, you know, it's all across the board, but mainly it's families and kids, okay. you know. So what our our main bait is um, a half ounce lead head with the Berkeley Gulp shrimp. Okay. In in natural color is the best bait. And just a, a, a lure that gets lots of bites and easy to fish. Yeah, I mean, so you when, can... if you have the, you know, it's all tidal. Right? Sure. So San Diego Bay, if you have the right tide, <clears throat> which is like a four and a half foot incoming, is okay. perfect in the morning. Um, or outgoing, uh, incoming also in the afternoon because of the westerly winds. But, um, um, yeah, so. That's just a, it, a, a, it, a good, a good production lure. Right, and it bites in the rod holder. When, okay. when it's biting, it's. You can't it's keep a, them off you it. You can't keep them off it. So, you know, I fish with, you know, hun, uh, probably a hundred families or moms with kids. That they don't know anything about fishing, they give me a call, call, and uh, I'm, I'm like, I got you covered, you know. And they get out there, and you know, it's super cool to put kids on a bay bass the first time they've ever caught a ah, fish. Totally. Families and kids, it's just as cool as as catching big ones, you know, the big bluefin. So I enjoy it all, you know, and and we've been doing it for a long time. And um, in the summer months, the corvina and the bonefish come into play, and that's pretty pretty insane too. And that's a different different tackle, different fishery. Yeah, like you know, on the bonefish, I I, I like to use really light whippy rods, mm-hmm. you know, on light line, you know. And then the corvina, <clears throat> I, I don't really do it on the, I don't do it too much on the the Riviera. But the ultimate thing for me to do in the bay in the sum, in, in the summertime is take the ranger out there, you know, right before your, dark. Fr- your freshwater charter boat, right. Right, take the ranger out there hour before dark and fish till like eleven, throwing throwing spooks and topwater baits. Oh, like how that. cool! cool. Is that, it has to be glassy. Okay, no, no wind. It'll be perfect but condition, it, but it's fun. That's cool. How yeah. cool is that? <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. And uh, so this time of year, you're doing um, bay. You said and three quarter day island trips. Right now we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have you had? I mean, obviously we know there's been a lot of weather, and there probably hasn't been a ton of a ton of time lately. But have you had a check on the islands here lately? Yeah, like we, how checked things been? we checked on. 
on a, on a, <coughs> last week and it was easy limits and nice size leans. Excellent. Okay. And um, some nice big reds and then mixture, you know. Perfect. Of, of cod, but yeah, it's biting good down there. When do you start to see like w- when were you when does Captain Al like expect to start seeing some yellowtail happening in the mix? Is that a springtime thing? With it's, <clears throat> it's been a springtime thing. The last couple of years they came through there pretty quick. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like the old days. But uh, hopefully this year it's same, you know, um, April, you know, April, May, June. And that's just the same deal, keep an eye on fish counts, keep an eye on water temperature, that kind of thing. What, right. what, what, what gets you motivated to start start getting your eyes up on the surface instead just, of the, the bottom critters? Just just the water temp and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, the water temp starts rising and the fish start rising. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> and then when will you start your potential offshore season? Like if somebody's wanting to, you know, wanting to go on the Riviera, wanting to go fishing with you, maybe thinking about booking mm-hmm. you in the summertime, like can, can we book for summer now or do you wait till that season starts? Absolutely. How, how does that part yeah, all work? you can book now. Okay. Um, you just go to CaptainClowers.com, click on the offshore link, and then click on book now and pick your 12-hour trip and get get all up to speed. It's all automated. Or they can call me direct at 619-800-FISH. 619-800-FISH. That's not a that's not an easy one to forget. <laughs> right? There it is. How, um, and uh, so when, when will you start your offshore season? Uh, it depends what the bluefin do, but lately it's been kind of early, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe May, April. Okay. You know, the middle of April probably. And that's a, mostly a 12-hour trip you were saying? Yeah, 12 hours, yeah. Oh, okay, and gotcha. Our, our three-quarter day trips are designed for the islands, you know. It's an eight-hour trip. Okay. <clears throat> so unless the bluefin are... Right in our backyard and biting, you can go catch them in eight. I mean, you can catch them in eight hours, but there's a lot of stress trying to get out there and catch them in eight there's hours. There's no doubt. If if you knew where that fish was at and you knew it was biting, you could drive to it and catch it and make a great day in hours, no problem. The right. problem is, you know, it takes far more than half of that time getting to the grounds, getting located, figuring out where they are, what the mood's in, you know, that kind of thing. Right, like, by absolutely. the time you got it figured out... On a short trip, you're you're pointed back the uh, the yeah. wrong direction. Yeah, I learned long, uh, many years ago where <clears throat> some people would try to get on the a tuna trip on a three quarter day on the eight hour trip, and it's just it's just way too much stress, you know. So <clears throat> if they want to catch tuna, I tell them you got to do a twelve hour. We had a lot of guys asking a lot of questions about bluefin this year and private boat and fishing and things like that, and so much of bluefin fishing was uh, how you go about approaching them. You know, we, you there was plenty of fish to be seen last year but they weren't you know that that fish isn't always the easiest to catch and what what is some of the things you could you know shed some light on when you know when cat mal's approaching a spot of bluefin like what are the what are the do's and don'ts that you'd try to follow well i always get ahead of them uh, on the up wind or up upwind so mm-hmm. you can shut it down and drift right into them if you know try to it's all timing, you know. Sure. So depending if they're swimming totally west or southwest, you got to get your boat up there and ahead ahead of them to deploy the kite, you know, and get the kite back in the back in the middle. And we also have a CH 500 in that bad boy too. So when the fish aren't up, you know, we see schools. You, you see them when they're not visible. You see schools. You try to figure out which way they're they're moving, you okay. know, and get up ahead of them and. Put the kite out. That's it. All right, I dig it. Try to lead them and uh, oh, yeah. be a little stealthy. Lead, lead them right to the keel bag. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> As Captain Dave Hansen says, they yeah. want to jump in the white yeah. bag. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So with the with the Riviera, when you're doing your bay trips, is that uh, will you still do everything? I mean, will you still get in, in fish spotties, or is that all the like you were saying the deeper deeper channel? Um, you know, fish and sand bass and halibut, and then also with that, what's the best time of year would you say for for doing the the bay the bay fishing? Anywhere from Feb, Feb, February till when the water cools down the winter okay. time, basically. Right now, <clears throat> it bites, but it's not optimal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're a little lethargic. Okay. But but if you had a, a family or or, or three yeah. individuals that just wanted to bend a rod, I mean, you could make right. it happen right, right. now. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. and and I think. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the worst time would be like after a deluge, like I mean, like we had last week, right? Yeah. We had uh, three or four inches yeah. of rain. Right. I mean, it might be damaged for four or five days, right. but it it rebounds super fast. Right. I live in National City, right next to the Back Bay, back there, and I drove over to Pepper Park ramp the other day, and there's lots of debris in the water, lots of junk, lot, nice and brown, you know, and oh, that shit. and that stuff will get out to in between, like. 
National City and the bridge is yeah. about as far as it gets out, out to, com- coming out from the And sea, it starts to get diluted. It's, it's yeah. pretty well cleaned out by that right, time. Right, yeah. 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 And the bay's big. The bay flushes right. a lot Huge. of water. You know, I mean, right. there's a lot of water that flushes in and out of that thing on Big Tide Exchange. Right. So. One other thing, I'm going to put lobster trips back on the schedule next ne- Oh, great. Next season. Good. I'm not doing them this year, but we're going to do them off the Riviera. But that was really popular right. uh, when, when you were doing them. There was some great right. lobster fish. And what a fun way to do it, too. If right. you know, don't have your own boat, but you want to go get some bugs with some buddies. Right. You provide all the gear. Yep. Obviously, if you're doing it on the big boat, it's going to be comfortable. You're going to stay warm. Right. That's the way to do it. You're watching a sports show inside where you're waiting for. <laughs> I, like right. I like it. Right. Well, as you can hear, Corey, we got a great show. So much fun having Captain Allen here, like we said, just because kind of all bases covered today from, from bass fishing to tuna fishing and more. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're going to have a good time for sure. And like, like you said, talking inshore, talking bluefin, and having a great time. You want to join Join us uh, to, again. Two ways to do it: two one three four three two ten ninety is the telephone number. You can join us right there, or uh, send some texts. I've uh, seen quite a few texts yeah, coming through yeah, already. already and you want to do that? It's only through the app. And uh, if you haven't downloaded the app yet. You definitely need to. It's a super easy way to do it. Even I can do it, Rick, right? I mean, it, it's got to be easy. I can do it, too. I know it, right? Yeah. If, this, if, this crowd, if this crowd is savvy with it, you, you can promise you it's not too tough. Yeah, yeah, it's super, super easy. So just go on there. There's a, a, a tab for a text to show, and it's a, a one-way deal. So you can send us a text, and uh, make sure that you do leave your name and your telephone number. Uh, because at the end of the show, Captain Al Clark actually will have his grandson, Benjamin, flip yeah, it, ben, right? Yeah, there you go. go. Benjamin yeah. Benjamin with me. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll, ha- we'll give him the honors of flipping the coin, and we'll, we'll determine whether our prize is going to go to a texter or a caller. And we're giving away, what are we giving away here, Rick? $100 off of any trip with Captain Fla- Clowers. I almost yep. called it Captain Flowers. <laughs> yeah. How cool yeah. is right. that? Right, $100 right there, yeah, man. So whether you want to go, whether you want to apply that towards a San Diego Bay trip, a half-day Point Loma Kelp trip, three-quarter day island, full day offshore, whatever whatever you want to go, whatever floats your boat with Cap now, you got a hundred bucks off going on a trip. There it That's is. That's really cool, bro. On, Thank you for doing you're that. You're welcome. On the Riviera. No, no kidding. Yeah. On the on the on the on the flagship. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There it is. Well, uh, we really appreciate yeah. that. Very generous and an awesome prize for one lucky caller. Again, somebody gonna get to go fishing. Hundred bucks off going fishing with Captain Captain Al Clowers on the Riviera. What a uh, what a cool one, man. It's gonna, Join be, a, gonna be a good day. It Corey. is, Rick. Join us right now. Two one three four three two ten ninety or text us via the app. We're gonna be right back with. Captain Captain Clowers, when we return on the Let's Talk a Kebab, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Countdown to spring with exhilarating deals on new Yamaha onboards during Yamaha's Power and Performance Sales Event from now until March 31st, 2024. Purchase a new eligible Yamaha 450 to 30 horsepower outboard and get up to seven years of warranty protection and a Siren 3 Pro package to your purchase of a 115 horsepower and up and receive a bonus $1,000 in dealer credit and half off your siren subscription looking for lower horsepower yamaha's got you covered purchase a new yamaha 25 to 2.5 horsepower outboard and receive up to two thousand dollars in dealer credit reliability starts here offer it's march 31st 2024 subject to change other restrictions and conditions apply select models excluded 24 month yamaha extended service added a 36 or 60 month factory limited warranty choice offered to florida residents is a 24 month yamaha limited warranty see authorized participating Yamaha Outboard Dealers for details cannot be used with any other Yamaha offer. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. We have always been the leader in fishing trips to Cedros Island. We have set the bar even higher with our second lodge opening for the 2022 season. Side-by-side lodges sitting on the cliff's edge with relaxing ocean views. With direct flights departing to the CBX in San Diego, we are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. Come check out the Yellowtail and Calico Bass Capital in the world. Nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. Call me at 619-772-7570 or check us out at cedrosportfishing.com. The -the state-of-the-art, long-range sport fishing vessel, the Independence, delivers the top quality, comfort, and fishability you look for in a long-range boat. Veteran Captains Mark Pisano and Paul Strasser built this incredible 112-foot vessel with the most modern technology and luxurious comfort available. Once you go on the Independence, you'll be back. Call Independence Sports Fishing at 619-226-6006 or check independencesportfishing.com. 
There are moments that change our perception of what is and isn't possible. Cosmic shifts where the stars align with the Earth to alter how we see the world. The release of King Tide is one of those moments. This is the crowning achievement of Costa's 40-year legacy on the water, the culmination of every innovation and lessons learned up until this point. Wins and losses and highs and lows have brought us here to stand witness to a legacy brought to life, to achieve the ultimate potential on the water. Costa King Tide, rule the water. Hi, I'm Pat McDonald. Join me at California's premier outdoor recreation shows. The Bart Hall shows January 25th through the 28th at Long Beach Convention Center and February 15th through the 18th at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Details at hallshows.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And man, being in the studio with Captain Clowers is such a cool thing, right? <laughs> Today's going to be a fun one. No, a lot of fun. No doubt. And speaking of fun, I had a great time. Got to go up with the family yesterday to the Bart Hall show. How'd it go? It was awesome. Really, really fun. It was a it was a great show. I think Bart did a great job. It was exactly as as he had described. Man, there was a ton. There was a ton going on. You know, it wasn't the it wasn't the the, the single craziest show it's ever been. You know, that he talked about being in their face of getting everybody back and I thought it was better than what Bart described and I thought Bart described a hell of a show so it was it was awesome there was good crowds of people lots of great vendors tons of boats it was just really fun and you know a really cool experience you know now as a dad to get to take my boy up there the same way my dad and I went up it was just awesome and really glad I went and I thought that uh, Bart and Pat and everybody did a really nice job it Super was, cool, it was to hear. cool yeah it was great it was a it was exactly what it was supposed to be it was a fun time and a bunch of people celebrating fishing buying gear I talked to Nick Kelly quite a bit from uh, West Coast Marine, and that came as both that you know we we yeah. all heard her talk about was just sickening. Really? Ben, Benny was in the booth. It was fun getting to chat. It was it was everything the show's supposed to be. You get to go up and see your buds and chat with the guys that you hear about. And you know it was exactly that man. I, I heard him talk about that boat on Let's Talk Hookup, and I was dying to go see it. And and we got to go, and why I got to run around the thing and honk the horn, and it was just <laughs> it was really fun, man. It was a gr- it was a great time. We had we had a really good time. It was Stoked cool. Stoked to hear, Rick. Yeah. And so today being Sunday is the yeah. last day of the show. I'll bet today would be a great. It, I mean, again, there's some there's some pretty serious football games going on, but if that's not your bag, what an awesome opportunity, because you know, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people staying at home watching the game, so it'll give you a great opportunity to slide in there without a huge crowd and get to kind of check everything out. Today would be a great day to go to the Bart Hall show, no doubt. Yeah, it was fun. Everything about it was good. I really really had a good time. Stoked to hear. And it was fun going through the main entrance instead of the exhibitor entrance for once. So, you know, it was a, it was a different experience. <laughs> right. Yeah, we had a good time. Well, Captain Al, the phones are definitely getting packed up again. Just like Corey said, if you want to get your shot 213-432-1090 or send us a text on let's talk cook up app lots of great texts rolling through but Corey, why don't we get started on the phones let's do it how about john john calling from dallas texas good morning john hey john good morning john good morning guys uh al my question to you is uh what's the best month to fish the bay for striped bass and uh uh that'd be fun to do um, as far as striped bass is concerned, um, if you're talking about the real striped bass, there's really no striped bass in San Diego Bay. We have spotted bay bass and, and spotted sand bass um, in the bay. It, it's just not something that comes in our bay, really. I mean, San Francisco Bay, of course, right? But it, it, yeah, we, I don't think you. I just that's a. I don't think I've ever heard of one. In, yeah, in same. Bay. Right? A little bit from the surf line. Salmon up the San Diego River. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. right. Plenty and of wild I, stuff. I got a little, quick little story. Yeah. And a long time ago, probably 30 years ago, probably, yeah. Ocean Beach, San Diego River going out. Like of flood o- control. O- o- OB, they were uh-huh. coming in there and spawning and boiling everywhere. We even went in there and threw our little 12 foot off the side and went in there trying to catch them. The striper? We, yeah, we didn't get bit, but that was the only time I've ever heard of them. Okay. In, so I think you're. In mass coming that, up there. Uh, uh, at that time, what you're mentioning, 30 years ago, the uh, Department of Fish yeah. and Game at that point yeah. had actually planted striper, you know, like one to two pounders, from uh, in the flood control area of San Diego uh, River. They did it there. They did it, uh, I think, in like Newport. I think they did it in several areas in Southern California. And of course, they didn't hold, right? I mean, right. it's just these fish that we were seeing were anywhere from like five to. 
10 pounds. Bigger, big, okay. Nice size fish. Hello. <laughs> Count me in on that one. I haven't seen it happen ever since. And and he, he, it, amongst this table, amongst all my buds, yeah. Corey, you're like the only buddy I have that has a... Was it you that had the big one, or was it Mark that got a big one on your bait? Remind remind me the story. Like, well, there's there's uh, a lot of big ones that have been caught in Southern California, like up to thirty pounds. I think I've yeah. heard the one I got was nineteen pounds. That's that's exactly the it's fish. Still I'm a thinking good one. Of. Yeah, it's still a good from the surf, Del Mar. Nineteen nice. pounder done on a leadhead and swim bait. <laughs> yes, that was back before you only fished a weedless, and you didn't scoff at me and Al for fishing our leadheads <laughs> and MCs. There it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. So that I mean. We do get them around here, but it's just yeah. our bay isn't loaded with our yeah, bay. Not conducive to it. But it's known for sand bass bodies and right. and great halibut fishing. Right. right. Yeah. So um, if you were talking about sand bass or spotted bay bass, they it bites all year. Mm-hmm. You know, all year round. You know, as the water warms a little bit, it gets a little more hot and heavy. But you can go out there right now, and you know. A bad trip on the Riviera is 20 keepers. You know, That's awesome. 20 fish. Yeah. You know? A good day is 130. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking I'll about. I'll take a bad yeah, trip. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a bad one. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a bad when trip with 20 bite, fish all day. When, when it's biting, you got six people on the boat, it's pretty easy to obtain 120. Yeah. That's fish. really cool. Quick, you know? Yeah. yeah. What, now, you talked about catching them good uh, with the gulp and the lead head. Do you have a, do you have a, you know, like, that's a great production way. Would that method change if you were trying to catch a big one or if you were, you know, if you are you know what I mean? Like what, what, what other, what other tricks to, are up the sleeve of, of Captain Clower? You know, when I used to fish those bay bass tournaments, gulp wasn't in the arsenal, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Cause it was a quantity type of bait. But after seeing what we were doing last year in May and June, July, it, it was crazy, you know. We're catching 15, 16, 17 pound for mm-hmm. five bag limit on the gulp. But back in the day, you throw a swim bait original, yeah, you know, religiously, you know. Sure. The five inch, you know, and then I throw the Alabama rig a, li- a little bit, but a lot of the guys that are winning right now are catching them on the Bama. Yeah, Corey, does the? I mean, I I I know it's it's lesser your bag, but let's face it, you make the single best bait in the world for it. Is there a difference what, what a guy if he was targeting sand bass? You know what kind of like I was talking about fishing sand bass in the channel. Is there a reason that you would fish a traditional MC swim bait versus the Viejo? Like the sh- shape of lure? Like is there a reason you would fish one over the other? Are they one just as good, or, or is there like a, a a you know a reason in the shape when you might use the big tail versus the 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 more swimming body of the Viejo? I think. Two Two questions would come in mind, like, are you tournament fishing? And if you are, <laughs> bigger the better. Yeah, okay. Sometimes, you know, most of the time, right? So, right. Well, especially if it's a three-fish limit. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> so you want to catch bigger fish. And, and to get short bites uh, by 12 to 14 inches on a six-inch bait, right. you almost want that. Exactly. Be- because yeah. those short bites, and some guys get frustrated, like, dude, I'm missing bites. Like, this isn't right. No, it is right. You, you want to miss those bites so that three to five pounder yeah. is like get out of my way you want to create, right. create I've got the, this create yeah. the competition Absolutely. feeding frenzy kind totally. of right so and then the other one the other second question would be like okay what's the bait in the harbor right now mm-hmm. right. is it chovy is it sardine because our our harbor uh there's a lot of sardine in it and if it's overrun with chovy then you better be fishing something in that three to five you know not smaller, three yeah. but four or five inch you right. know right. Yeah. it's got a lot of big ones on five inch yeah. yeah, and that's that that that's a pretty standard one, I right. think. Five inch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just cool. just for going and having fun. And then you got to look at the other way, Rick. I mean, and Al, like that's. Do you want brown bait, orange belly colors, or do you want bait fish patterns? Yeah, right? Right. and it's, it's going to be one or the other. You better for have sure. a box full of. We're talking my language, man. I like it. <laughs> I know that. Hey, John, appreciate the phone call very much. Had another great text come through from another John. This is from John in Rancho San Diego. It says, "Great to hear Captain Al back on the radio." Al, I think I'm about the only San Diego fisherman that has never caught a legal California halibut. I've had plenty of shorts, but what do I need to do to catch a keeper? Um, What is the recommended setup, gear, time of year, all the good stuff? That's from John in Rancho San Diego. What a great question. You know, halibut in the bay all year, they're in the the all year. Around June, June is a really good month. Um, To target them, you know, it depends on all the conditions and stuff, but with a 
Carolina rig, you know, and a and and a sardine, you can't go wrong. When we fish, try to catch the real big ones. We'll we'll, we'll um, use mackerel. There you go. But yeah. mainly mainly on the channel edges, you know. There's some areas in the bay where it's flat for miles, and for some reason, you know, that they, they get up in there. Um, we used to, I you know, on my trips sometimes. We used to troll the crankbaits mm-hmm. back in that twelve that that uh, twelve that twelve foot of water because you you know and, and 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 it would work really good. But whether you, whether uh, you get a spotty or a halibut the next cast or whatever, right? Yeah, right, that yeah, slow it, troll. Right, use the big DD twenty twos, you know, that are just uh, skimming across the bottom, you know, making right. a big ruckus, you know. But the easiest way to target. A keeper halibut would would be with bait. Yeah. Whether you whether you want to bounce ball a piece of bait, you want to Carolina rig it. You know. Explain a Carolina rig for people that aren't familiar. <clears throat> Just a sliding a sliding sinker with a bead and a swivel, okay. and then like a two two foot leader. So the sinker's you know? on your main line, right. and it slides back and forth until it hits the swivel, and then right. the swivel stops it. And then right. how how what kind of distance do you like from the swivel to your hook? Ah, two two foot two two to three foot probably. Okay. And, and I like your thinking, man. Like, uh, if it's not a sardine, then I'm going to go bigger. I'm going to go right. mackerel. And right. that's really the way to do it. Right. Some of trap the big, hook? No trap hook? Yeah. Tra- I, I, I forgot about that. Trap hook, uh, for, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On a mackerel. Right. And then... And, uh, even on sardines, yes. And then, uh, is it a mono? Is it a fluoro? Does that not matter in the bay? You know, I don't, I don't really... I don't really... Um, it could be mono or mm-hmm. fluoro. You know, the bay's... You know, when you're fishing... The bay, most of the time, the water's pretty off color. You mm-hmm. know? So I feel that you don't need fluorocarbon. You might want to use fluorocarbon for resistance for their teeth. A little better abrasion. Right. Okay. Right. And, and you mentioned that 12 feet of water in the back bay. I mean, there is a, there's miles, right. square miles of, right. of that, like 10 right. to 15, 12 feet of water. Right. It's, right. there's a lot of it. And, and a that, lot of halibut taken out of the area. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I love it, man. Right. The, uh, the other, and then last question, uh, how heavy a line? Like, how heavy a line are we fishing? Is this the same as you'd be fishing down an IV where you're fishing a 25 pound, you know, live bait outfit and a bigger reel? Or is this, you know, is this the same fishing as your, Bay bass equipment, but you're fishing for halibut. Well, on our spinning bay rods, we've I've, I've caught up to 17 pound hal, hal, halibut on that light stuff. But you know, 15 pound main line with a 15 pound leader, or you know, you can go 20 pound leader mm-hmm. flor, fluorocarbon. If you you know if you once I get up to that to that heavier line, I'll definitely go to fluorocarbon. Okay. You know? That's it. Good call. Hey, well, that's a I mean, that's a lot of killer info, John. I hope that you're able to knock that halibut off the list. And again, if if that's really what your goal is, then go fishing with Captain Al. Like, <laughs> if you're able to spend a day doing it in good weather, like you're going to put him on some halibut. You know, obviously, yeah. there's always going to be some luck factor involved. You know, you can't make a you know you can't make a 23 incher bite instead of a 19 incher. Like that that's always going to be part of it. But uh, you're certainly going to you know you're going to get some shots. And if anything. You're going to see how you set your gear up and how you rig and how your hooks and even even if you're you have your own boat and you like that type of fishing, going with a, a professional like Captain Al is going to shorten your learning curve on things that you're not aware of already. Right. Yeah. yeah I dig. Every, every now and then we get guys that just want to target a certain species and halibut's one of them. So John, so John, John's in Rancho San Diego and he's wanting to catch a halibut. And I know you said June's a good month. Is that is that when you're booking? Like when when would you book if you were in John's shoes? And uh, and which trip would you would you pick? A uh, half day bait trip, okay, you know, or or a full day bait bait. Well, that's what I that's what I meant. Like, you, can you do longer than a half day and yeah, stay stay in the yeah, bay? Yeah, yeah, you can do eight uh, eight hour do, full day. Yeah, so like do what you would do at the islands, but just stay in the bay, right. pound it out, right. be able to fish all the areas, be able to fish through all the all the tide. Right, you can fish both both cycles. That's cool. Yeah, and a lot of times they like to bite red as it's coming into a slack or. You know, whether it's low or high, too. Interesting. Know. There you go, John. <clears throat> Got to go get him now. Appreciate the call. Appreciate yeah. the text very much. Let's jump back to the phones, Corey. Let's do it, Rick. How about Hills? Hills calling from Ventura. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Let's Talk Cookup. Hey, good morning, Captain Al and uh, <clears throat> Corey and Rick. Um, my question is about angel sharks. and wondering if Captain Al encounters them because my buddy was just saying uh, 
that there's no more angel sharks. And I go, no way, because, like, Andrea Seafood and Ventura Harbor, that's what, that's fish and chips there, you know? And um, my other question about angel sharks is, uh, do they bite? <laughs> that's the do they bite? Well, do, they, do they bite? Do they bite your finger, or do they bite the bait? <laughs> that's the meanest animal that's ever been created. You don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. That's the meanest animal that's ever been made. You definitely don't want one anywhere near your finger. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and for those that don't know what we're talking about, angel shark, they have a mouth almost as wide as their body. They're they're like a ray looking shark that lays on the bottom. And they've got teeth not only in the front of the lip, but man, they've got teeth all the way down the gullet. Like and, and I joke what Hills talks about, do they bite? Damn right they do. Like that's the I've uh, never in, I've never in my life had to deal with a fish that I thought was trying to bite me. Like I'm gonna get you, S O B. You get close enough like you know. Like uh, going in with a pair of duck bills to you know to remove a, to remove my MC swim bait and just like oh like scratch marks down the duck bills like and, and they're they're so mean they're ambush predators dude. they lay in the sand like a halibut and when the prey comes over they're 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 not looking for a strip they're looking for <laughs> they're looking for a fish to swim over them so that they can yeah. uh, devour right, right, it right. You, you ever catch them <clears throat> yeah we catch them all the way in the back bay yeah. Yeah, I have a spot way in the back. Really? It's so okay. So skinny, like Riviera can't get there. But yeah, we we do it in the skiff. Take the black men in. Yeah, the zero tide, um, or stringari. What's your what's your the smaller? Stri- the stringari. Stringari, smaller. Yeah. Okay. But on a zero tide, the eel grass is sitting going up and laying over a little bit. You got to okay. slide out of there. You got to get out of there right at slack tide. Okay. It's below that, you. You're not getting out. Well, I've never got, not got out, but back in the day when I had the Chris Craft, I've slid that thing out of there <laughs> plenty of times. How crazy. Because the bite was so good in like six foot of water. Do you, wow. do you ever catch the bonefish up in that shallow right. too? Well, I have an area back there where I anchor yeah. and then take the chum buddy. Yes. Right, and get that stuff all going, and get the fish to come to come to me. And I've had guy on a hundred pound bat ray, and the other three are catching bonefish all at the same time. Oh, that sounds wow. so cool. Yeah. That's way cool. And that happens once the water temperature gets up to closer to seventy. It's kind of a small window back there, but <clears throat> I believe that's when they're spawning and stuff. Like. The end of March, you know. Well, that leads us into our uh, our next text, which was a, another great one. It says, uh, uh, "Good morning, Corey and Captain Al. What a great show! I love hearing from Captain Clowers, one of my most favorite <laughs> Let's Talk hookup guests." My question, Captain Al, do you ever target bonefish in San Diego Bay, and what's the best time of year um, if you're allowed to talk about them? I know it's a hush hush scenario. That's from Mike in Oceanside. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, it's been hush hush for thirty, forty years, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. But everybody knows. But yeah, we, we we will target bone bonefish and the water temperature needs to get up I would say to sixty eight, sixty nine. <clears throat> and they'll bite pretty much all the way to October ish. Okay. Depending on if we get any of those no, no, northern storms or whatever. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean I've had trips um, mixed trips, not necessarily, hey, I want to catch a bonefish, but mm-hmm. we want to catch bait sharks, right? So I'd go back, and there's an area where I go and <clears throat> anchor up, and it's literally eight feet deep at like a plus two tide. That's so crazy. And, and um, there's a little hole back there. But anyway, like I said, they'll be on big bay sharks, you know? Yeah. Big old, big old what a fun, what a fun day, though. And, 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 and bonefish. I'll put, you know, three bay, uh, shark rods out and then put a couple bonefish rods in the other hands. And as long as you, you're chumming a little bit and getting a bunch of stuff in the water, mm-hmm. the, the bonefish will come to you. And I think, I think the most we caught in like a little two-hour window is like... 27 bonefish. Crazy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's yeah. really I fun. mean, how it's unique. Going. I mean, you'd say bonefish, and you think Belize and Costa Rica right. and, you know, southern Mexico and, you know, maybe as far north as Mag Bay, right? Yeah. But, dude, There's San Diego a, Bay. Right. Yeah, right. it's a legit fishery for them. No, it is. Totally legit. So yeah. summertime, warm water, same, same thing. If somebody, man, like, man, what a fun thing to do. I want to check that off my bucket list. Okay. We could we could do a, a bay charter and, and have a pretty fair shot at getting one? Absolutely. You know, We can do them even on the, the Riviera That's going to be my next question. I can't get that into six foot of water. Yeah. But, <laughs> but there's an area back there where there's a bunch of eelgrass and stuff <clears throat> that they bite too, you know. But it's like any other fishery. I mean, you could look at... All the conditions, tides, water temp. Sure. Look at everything and do a textbook date to go and 
sometimes you know that you catch one or two. Sometimes you know you catch ten or fifteen or twenty. Even Cap Mal has days where he's just yeah. working out. Oh, I, yeah, I just gotta that throw life. that out there because that, <laughs> because that's the reality of yeah, that, that, oh, these trips. No doubt about it. That's no, definitely good times. Hey, we're gonna be right back with Captain Al Clowers. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's talk hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Low, low, low gas prices, great service, and free ice is what Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena is all about. For your car, truck, and especially your trailer boat, you need Summit Gasoline. The savings are substantial when you fill up at the Summit, but they don't compromise on service. No way. The great staff is attentive, friendly, and ready to help. When you pull up to the pumps, notice how clean it is, the great sound system, and, of course, the low gas and diesel prices. Walk into the Summit Gasoline Bistro and check out the selection of frozen bait and chum, the -the top-of-the-line Italian coffee, and so much more. Now, hear this. Get 100 pounds of ice free with a 35-gallon minimum purchase and stock up on snacks, beer, water, soda, and fishing licenses for your trip. Just when you need low gas prices most, Summit Gasoline at the Sports Arena comes to the rescue. Summit Gasoline. Low prices, friendly staff, free ice, and easy in and out with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Arena. Get ready for the most exciting sports show of the year. The giant 14th annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show. March 7th to the 10th at the OC Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa. Check out hundreds of sport fishing exhibitors, manufacturers, tackle dealers, fishing boats, and fishing resorts taking up all seven halls at the fairgrounds. 217,000 square feet. Plus fantastic seminars and a free kids trout pond. Back by popular demand, the PCS show also has freshwater to cover bass and trout. Learn from some of the top names in the sport fishing industry. From catching giant bluefin, swordfish, calico bass, and more. Take advantage of incredible show specials from major tackle retailers and boat dealers. Talk to the top fishing travel destinations. Four full days, Thursday, March 7th to Sunday, March 10th. The 14th Annual Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Tackle Boat and Travel Show at the O.C. Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa. Don't miss it. All right, it's time to talk about great gear from Shimano and switching gears real fast. What a day yesterday up at the Bart Hall show. The boys at the Shimano Power Pro booth were very busy. Some fantastic Power Pro line fill options on some of the Shimano reels. And, man, there was a line uh, behind all those line machines. I saw Matt Towner and the whole gang, John Cooch up there, uh, and everybody was just mowing along. So many great deals on Shimano reels. And it's show season both at the Bart Hall show now. We got... Bart Hall San Diego coming up, the PCS show coming up, some great times on those new Shimano reels, including the new Talica A's are, are out, uh, the new sizes of Speedmaster, there's just lots of great options from Shimano, and always during showtime, some fantastic opportunities on Power Pro Line to go along with them. Check it out, it's the Shimano deals at the shows. It's, for more information, you can check out Shimano.com, or better yet, just go into your local tackle store and check them out for yourself. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Cal. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state of the art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. It's time for the Power Pro 30 Second Seminar. I like catching big fish. And I like smaller reels, too. How do I make sure that I have the capacity to land the big one? I fill my reels with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro, so you get more line on that small reel. Power Pro has a complete series of highly effective lines, including the brand new Power Pro Depth Hunter Offshore, with different colors every 100 feet. Perfect for flat fall fishing. Want to learn more? Check PowerPro.com. Hey, welcome back to uh, Let's Talk Hook Up, a man in the world headquarters with Captain Clowers and just talking good times, man. Everything from bonefish to bluefin, and you want to join us, uh, we do have an open line for you right now, and that's uh, 213-432-1090, or you can text us via the app. We're giving away, uh, Captain Clowers has been gracious enough with a $100 certificate for anybody that wants to charter the Riviera. Well, that's, uh, How sweet is that, a, a dude? A bay trip. It could be a, a half day in, in a kelp or 
three-quarter day to the islands. Correct. Or yeah. offshore? Yeah. Offshore, too. Yeah. I'll tell you, yeah. Captain Mal, I would not mind being anchored up on a <clears throat> killer little kelp line in Point Loma on an afternoon sunny day when the bass are biting and you've got a tank full of chovy sprinkling those things around, oh, throwing some MC weedless, catching a few big ones, catching a bunch of the chove. Like I, you can sign me up for a half-day Riviera trip on that one. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's me right there. That calico fishing can get completely ridiculously wide open, you know? It's pretty insane. That's fun. You got that, me, that, you got that, me that, falling. <laughs> that old deckhand gets a little beat up out there when because every bait in the water is bit. You yeah, know. Hey, I got another one. I got another one. I'm right. broke off. Tiny new hook on. I got another one, man. Shake this one oh, off, yeah. man. My finger hurts. Let's keep going. Let's keep right. it. I need that's, a sandwich, too. That's while we... how it is. Yeah. And the next one's a 20-pound 20, 20 sea bass. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jeremy had that happen, happen to him last, last year. So rad. Yep. So cool. Well, boy, t- speaking of great fishing, lots of that going on and lots of great times. And speaking of great times and good fishing, we're going to talk to our good buddy, Captain Brian Willie, because it's time for the catch port, Corey. And it's brought to us by Norsk Lithium Batteries. And they're here in Southern California, designed specifically for marine use. Norsk Lithium features prismatic cells for extreme durability, solid connections, longevity, and reliability. The Norsk Guardian Advanced Battery Management System allows you to monitor the health and charging status by using their app on your phone your on on your phone and Norsk also makes a complete line of kayak and electric reel batteries and make an investment in the best for your boat with Norsk Lithium check norsklithium.com or go see the trolling motor doctor Angler's Marine for the Norsk, Lis- Li- Norsk Lithium batteries. Try saying that ten times. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Did you see him up at the show, Rick? I uh, I got to see the uh, the booth at uh, Angler's Marine. I mean, booth isn't the right word. It's the showcase. You know, the kind of transition hall from the arena to the main one. And and man, those guys make such an insane display. It was awesome. Uh, I just really like it. Rick Grover. Just you know, you want to talk about a guy that knows how to make a display with boats. And he had a big area. It's the spot. You know, where where we're so used to seeing him in the show and you know the arena had a ton of boats in it and, and some great booths as well but but yeah they were in that uh, Angler's Marine was in that transition between the two and it looked fantastic and I, I felt bad for the boys you know we, we had a lot of fun looking at him and, and Wyatt who's now two just has to get on every boat and look in every live well and grab the steering wheel and do everything that like a kid is supposed to do at those shows we had a, we had such a blast yesterday that pretty was, cool yeah it was really fun hey well with that let's head on up to Dana Wars Board Fishing and talk to Will He's on the line right now. What's up, Captain Brian? Good morning, buddy. What's happening, guys? Good morning. How are you, buddy? Man, that, good. That bonefish stuff sounds bananas, man. That's it's just it's crazy. so much fun, Willie. You really need to come down and do it. It's really cool. Light line. And it's so and... it's totally legit. You know, it's so hard. Like it's so hard to dismiss it. But man, it's it's a fun fishing. You can you can go target them and actually catch them. Totally. Brian. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, here I hear about it all the time, but never experienced it. I might have to give that a shot. It's pretty cool, but uh, man, mellow week for us up here. You know, lighter loads on both the half and three quarter days just kind of means you know limited limited time on the water for us. The water temp fifty eight degrees was seemed to be the the number of the week for us. Um, with that, you can kind of you know use your head and figure out the whole bass fishing thing. Still relevant, right? We're still catching some fish, but it uh, it took. A little bit of finesse approach, you know, dropping down a little bit in line size. If you're normally fish 20 to 25, guys are dropping to like 15 to 10 pound, you know, in that little range to kind of get down there and just kind of scale it down to that lighter monofilament to get the, the better bites. Presentation kind of played into that too, you know, instead of fishing a live sardine on the bottom, you know, guys were trying the strip sardine on the bottom with the sliding egg sinker, something that you know, when the water temperature is cool, that fish's metabolism slows way down, too. So, you know, that stuff on the bottom is not going to put out as much effort to catch a live sardine as it would, you know, maybe a strip of sardine or a strip of mackerel that's kind of rolling around in front of them. So that kind of paid dividends for those hefty anglers. On the three-quarter day stuff right now with that cool water, you know, you know what we fish for when the water's cool like that. It's the sculpin and the whitefish. So they kind of have that prominent position there on those trips. You know, we're just kind of trying to catch what's relevant and what uh, has been biting. So the uh, rubber lures on the heavy sinkers, pretty straightforward setups on that stuff. Down on the bottom, a little strip of squid, catching plenty of that, going home with those guys. And uh, not much on the halibut front this week, really either to report back on that. The guys were out. They didn't really see much. Uh, 
conditions I don't think were great as far as water movement. Yeah, there were some tides and some stuff like that, but there wasn't a lot of current to kind of move the boat around, which is pretty important when you're uh, drifting for that stuff. So I tell you, if you want to come out this week, take advantage of the couple good days of weather at the beginning of the week because it looks like the world's going to end here towards the end of the week with the amount of rain that there's in that <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, get in while uh, well, it's still dry. That's right. So if uh, you got some new new expenditures that you had the, the show there, you want to come and give it a shot, certainly come give it a Give it a whirl here. We're just feverishly trying to wrap up boat work projects and painting before, you know, we get saturated. So oh, the sky that's our up. that's our rundown. So super mellow week. Give us a call here if you want to come on out. Our number nine four nine four nine six five seven nine four. Of course, uh, you can hit us at danawarf.com, or uh, if you want to book online, you can link us there through the West Hook page, too. It's always a great time. There's some fish to be had. There's a cheeseburger to be eaten. There's some ocean air to breathe in, man. It doesn't sound like a bad deal to me, Willie. That's right. Soak it in before you before you get soaked. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Thanks, bro. We'll talk to you next Bye week. Bye, right? boy. Thanks. Right, have a great week. All right. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, hey, while we're waiting for our surf guru, we got the man. Bart Hall is on the line right now, and today the final day of the Long Beach show. Bart, can you believe that it's already come and and uh, there's only one day left? No, I can't. But you can hear my voice. <laughs> I'm about at the end of it. But I gotta tell you, I was so happy to see you there. You and your beautiful wife and your gorgeous children. Rick, you are your family is the reason my dad and I have been producing these shows. We produce these shows for families just like yours. It was so nice to see you there. That, that made me very, very happy. Well, well, the feeling was mutual, buddy. I, I Like I said, I I grew up going to that show with my dad, and, and I was so stoked to get to do it with my boys, and it was it was a fun experience, and it was a completely different one. You know, I'm used to, you know, running around and busy and not getting to, you know, I, I, I don't often get to take in the shows, and, and I did. You know, I, we're, we're too busy a, a lot of times, and we got to do the races and see the dogs jump in and and we went on every boat that was displayed and we went in every ford truck that was there it was just a it was an awesome time and i thought you did a great job bart we really really enjoyed it well thank you i gotta tell you that in all my years of doing this yesterday was my favorite day at our shows i had a great time and i'm glad you're talking about <laughs> your son running around the boats because that's one of the things the kids love to do oh, <laughs> and, and, and they do and, and, and you know we, as as it turns out we've kind of turned into the state's boat shows uh, nobody comes close to having as many boats as we have and, it, and it's really fun. Gro, you're right. Grover does a great job with that display. And, but there's, you know, it's probably 150 votes at that show. They're going to be saving Delmar. It's fantastic. It's a big part of what we do. But I, I love that outside area, the, the progressive plaza. You know, you, you talked about it. The trout pond and the ducks and the casting for pretty mm-hmm. dick and the uh, air gun range and then the dogs down below and food out there at tables. And it, it is so much fun to see that big pack with, pe- with families having a great time. And, and inside, I had the opportunity over the last two years to lay it out differently, which is something I've always wanted to do. Instead of forcing everybody down these lines where you you know you can't walk, you get pushed around. We, we have islands, we have spaces, we have different. You, you can stop, and it, people aren't getting pushed around, and, and it was great. And, and we've had really good. Good luck this year. Uh, we've had, we were up in attendance every single day of the show over last year. And I'm just very, feel very blessed, very lucky. Uh, the, the seminar, oh, just, uh, we had the, thank, Pat McDonald, thank you, thank you, thank you. The, the symposium on women in fishing, it was altering. I mean, it just, it blew my mind. It was so good. We're doing it in, in Del Mar, too. I agree. It's it, 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 yeah, it, it, it was so good. I, I can't. I can't hardly describe it. Uh, it, it no, the place was packed. People standing everywhere, and and to hear all those ladies, uh, there was like twelve of them up on the stand, just telling stories, just telling about their life experiences in, in fishing. It was really, really great. I, I can't thank Pat enough. For, for put that together. I'm kind of embarrassed. I haven't done that before because it was so great. We're going to keep doing it every year. Anyway, but, you know, 
We have great. Ba- we have this probably the best lineup of bass speakers ever. <laughs> and, uh, and the bass tank was it's awesome. Just fun. Lots of yeah. big fish again, man. I couldn't drag my boy away from the from the bass tank, and and it was so funny. There's a bunch of big bass in there, and the most impressive thing was the giant bluegill. Like there's a, I mean, there's a bluegill that's bigger than half the bass, and they were all nice bass. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a just an awesome display, Bart. You guys did such a great job, and it's going on again today. Uh, give us the rundown if we want to uh, come up today, and then also about Delmar. That's the biggest bluegill I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's giant, yeah. dude. Like you know how all the all the bass usually like get balled up at one end. Like the bass tank is always the same thing. Like all the bass will get comfortable. There'll be whatever. There'll be a rock or there'll be a shade from the ladder, whatever it is. Like all the bass will be in one area, and then all the bluegill, if there's any, will be somewhere else. This bluegill was like in the middle of the pack of all the bass, just not worth. I mean, <laughs> like the bully of oh, all. Oh, dude, hundred percent, man. This thing was a he was <laughs> a beast. It. it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Anyway, and then we opened at uh, at ten today. We closed at six. Uh, it, it's uh, going to be another great day. I know there's football games on. Uh, uh, we will have them on in the restaurant if people want to see them. But I think it's uh, the people who love outdoor recreation will, will uh, probably tape the game and go home and see it later. Uh, it, it, we're looking forward to it. it. It's been so much fun this week. I, I feel so proud of this show. I'm more proud of this show than any show I've ever produced. I hope you guys come out and uh, and check it out because it's great. And we're going to reprise this whole thing down in, in Del Mar uh, in, in next month, uh, the 15th to the 18th. And uh, we're looking, really looking forward to that, too. So, awesome. Well, great job, Bart. We thanks. had a fantastic time yesterday. Go rest that voice, buddy. I, uh, the next water's on me. That was a, that was a lot of talking that I'm sure it wasn't easy, but uh, man, we could hear the excitement in your voice, and it was justified. It was a great day yesterday. I appreciate you taking the time coming and, and talking with us this morning. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. All right, Bart. Appreciate that very much. Hey, well, we're going to continue with our catch report. We got the man, the surf guru, Gundy Gunderson, is on the line. What's going on, Gundy? Good morning, Gundy. Well, with the weather, I'm not quite the man this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this hasn't been this hasn't been easy surf report in these last couple of weeks, has it? No, uh, you know, we talked about that last time with Corey. Uh, we didn't have too much runoff, but, you know, that three inches in San Diego and stuff really – churned up that that water in those bays and stuff so we're just kind of on a little holding pattern the best that's been up north there you know some of those western beaches west of santa barbara gaviota uh el capitan uh, those areas cleaning up a little and it's not really good fishing but they're scratching at some some bark perch in there and and like i say we got to wait for conditions to get a little better and we'll keep our eye on that san diego bite you know i'm not giving up on that yet by any stretch you know that kind of thing but i want to make one comment i just i found this out i should have found this out earlier i'm sure you guys talked about it but uh that ban of fishing in laguna beach uh i i've spent so much time fishing laguna beach i i I could almost make an argument I'd put a thousand days in there, you know. It, it was, uh, such a fantastic dynamic stretch of beach and just to all out close it, it's just so wrong headed in, in so many ways. Uh, you know, <clears throat> hypocrisy seems to be doled out in big chunks these days. And here's a perfect example. Uh, you know, running under PCH, the main sewage pipe running through all of Laguna Beach, um, originally was terracotta, and they've replaced sections, but there's still sections of pipe that date back to the 1930s. Great. And these, these, these pipes weep raw sewage, and, you know, the sewage, most of the sewage problems in that, those city beaches come from this, you know. But that doesn't seem to be an issue with the city council. You know, the city council feels that it's the fishermen you know, picking mussels off. Or, you know, most guys don't even fish with mussels in Laguna. You know, a lot of it's sand crabs. So all these issues, it's just ridiculous, the hypocrisy. And that's not a way to manage fisheries, you know, is by just shutting them down. So yeah. uh, it's a tough one for me, guys. I just spent so much time fishing those beaches. It's one of the most dynamic stretches of surf fishing on the whole coast. And for a bunch of, you know, I don't know, elitist, I don't like using terms like that, but I, I don't know, that's that's kind of what it smacks of, you know, like this is our beach, 
Uh, you know, we're well, going to put a it. fence around it and keep out. <clears throat> you're, you're definitely saying it right, and it hurts, and that's why we have Wayne and mm-hmm. Chris and CCA. Yeah. And yeah. can they win them all? Can we win them all? No. But can we minimize yeah. and mitigate and, and make yeah. it smaller than what they wanted? Yes, definitely. And, yeah. and Gundy, yourself, myself, Rick, and the rest of us can't uh, speak the language, but they do, and they're yeah. there for us. So that's why we have yeah. to be a part of CCA. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, well, well said, Gundy, man. We can hear the passion in your voice, and, and we get uh, it, buddy. P- p- appreciate yep. uh, appreciate it as always. And hey, let's let's just like uh, like Willie says, let's let's try and sneak a little fishing in before uh, before it opens up and shuts the door on us again. <laughs> I could still picture a seven pound Corby that that I caught down there in thousand steps. That, that one's with me the rest of my life. Yeah, they're not that's, taking that away. That's a big one. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thanks, Gundy. Good show as always. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's rad. That's going to wrap up our catch report. Man, the 2024 Bill Varney CCA calendar, it's available now. Get it at local tackle shops, landings. It's loaded with great photos, information, and the best tide charts available. And we're going to be right back with Captain... F- <laughs> Almost said it again. <laughs> Captain Clowers when we return on the list. Talk of about the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Join us as we honor 76 years of Hall family shows at the Bart Hall Show, January 25th through 28th at the Long Beach Convention Center, presented by Progressive. Celebrate the passion of fishing, boating, hunting, international travel, off-road adventure, and the overland experience. Hundreds of seminars. Learn to trout fish the eastern Sierras. Fast fishing legends from fresh and salt water will entertain you daily. Legendary anglers will celebrate our unique California offshore fleet from point conception to beyond the Mexican border. Learn to fly fish at the Fly Fishing Show within a show. Acres of boats, fishing boats, tow boats, pontoon boats, inflatables, personal watercraft, and more. All under one roof. Make the deal of a lifetime. Enjoy the Mammoth Lakes Kids Fish Free Trout Pond, the Turner's Outdoorsman Ultimate Air Dogs, and the Convict Lake Great American Duck Races. Join CCA Cal for a special show package. Thanks to Accurate Fishing Tackle, Okuma, Bob Sands Fishing Tackle, Daiwa, and the Southern California Ford Dealers. The Bard Hall Show, January 25th through 28th at the Long Beach Convention Center. Details at hallshows.com. That's hallshows.com. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. Spring 8-day, Summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range Voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at RoyalStarSportFishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination for travel travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. This is Captain Art Taylor from Searcher Sport Fishing. Your hook is one of the most important links to catching fish. And at Searcher Sport Fishing, we use and recommend Gamagatsu hooks. The Gamagatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with a variety of sizes all the way down to size 4, Gamagatsu hooks are the ones to use. It's important to be prepared with the right tackle when you come aboard Searcher. So that should include Gamagatsu hooks. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more.